Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about some everyday items that you could use in a survival situation if something were to happen to your primary gear. Maybe that gear is lost, maybe it's stolen, or you might just need to make some repairs to it and some of these items could help with that. I'll also go over some useful tips that you could use with these to make everyday life easier also. The first thing that I want to talk about is zip ties. These have a wide range of uses, whether you're using them for survival or you're just trying to do stuff around the house. I mean, you can use them to repair many different types of gear. Maybe you're trying to repair a backpack. Maybe you're trying to repair a rifle sling. One thing that I like to do is if I have like a pouch or a holster or something that isn't Alice or Molly compatible, then you can use zip ties to jerry-rig those things so that they will work with those different types of gear. And of course, you can also use the smaller zip ties to help you lock up Alice clips so that if you have something like an ammo pouch or a canteen that those clips just won't bust open all of a sudden and cause you to lose your stuff. Zip ties also work well if you're trying to do something like hang lights during a power outage and then also for more mundane things. My wife and I, we needed to hang some clothes in the Jeep so we used a zip tie to allow us to hang clothes hangers from the roll bar. But if you're going to be working with zip ties, I strongly recommend that you get a set of flush cutters, especially if you're working with them a whole lot. This will cut it right even with the top so that you don't scratch yourself up. And then of course also larger zip ties can be used for things like uh, if you need to restrain a bad guy until the police get there, the bigger ones work really well for that. They're pretty hard to get through. And also one thing that my dad and I have done is we have uh, tripod deer feeders on our hunting property and the hogs get really, really uh, kind of uh, aggressive with the feeders trying to get the corn out of them and sometimes they can tip over. So we've driven T-post in uh, into the ground right next to the tripod legs and we'll use zip ties to secure the legs to those T-posts to make them just a little bit harder for critters to knock over. The next everyday item with a lot of different survival uses is steel wool. And probably the most common one that you've seen before is using a 9 volt battery and steel wool to start a fire. It works extremely well. It works so well, in fact, that you want to keep them completely separate until you need them because even just a slight touch will ignite this stuff. And you can use a ferro rod to light steel wool as well. Then beyond fire starting, there are some other survival uses. You can do things like use this to plug holes, like maybe if you have a gap between your window and the frame of your house that's put in. When I was in college, I lived in a pretty rough place that, that was like that. I mean, it had a hole that you could shove a sock into, but this will help reduce that draft. It'll help plug it, and it also has the added benefit of uh, making rodents' lives much, uh, much more miserable and shorter than they would be otherwise if they try to come through that hole because they will chew through this and it'll kind of mess up their insides a little bit and kill them for you. Then also, I mean, if you have something like a, a loose screw or maybe you've had to take a screw in and out of something so many times that it, the holes become stripped out, you can wrap some steel wool around a screw and it'll grab a halt a lot better than it would otherwise. And then one really good thing about steel wool, and it's available in different grits. This is uh, super fine which is good if you want to remove maybe just like small amounts of surface dust from like a gun barrel or something like that. It works very well for that. Uh, also can remove rust from things like knives. Maybe you get some old cast iron somewhere and it has a lot of rust on it. Then the more coarse stuff will take care of that just fine. Another everyday item that has a ton of different survival uses are buckets and these are prepping all-stars. You can use them for a ton of different things. You can use them as water filters using either just natural materials or you can do what I did, attach a spigot to one so that you can use something like a Sawyer tap filter as a gravity filter when it's attached to that bucket. You can also use them as a toilet. You can either buy like an actual seat designed specifically for buckets, or if you're in a pinch, you can use something like a pool noodle around the edge so it's comfortable to sit on. 
And then even things like gardening. Most of my plants are in five gallon buckets and the ones that aren't are either just in planter pots or grow bags. And then also, I mean, other things like kits. I did a video about this time last year that was the water saver kit. It was things that you could use to reduce the amount of water that you would be using if you were in an emergency situation. Things like paper plates so you didn't have to wash dishes, hand sanitizer so you didn't actually have to wash your hands, and then other things like that. You can use them as kits. I mean, it doesn't have to be that. You could also put your lights out kit in a five gallon bucket. Of course, you can use them for food storage. They're just a great way to protect food items and different kinds of gear so that you can grab them and go when you need to. Another item that has a lot of survival uses is soda cans. When that big ice storm hit Texas uh, about a year and a half ago, I didn't have an alcohol stove. So I went on YouTube, found a tutorial, and I made an alcohol stove out of a Coke can, and it actually works pretty well. It will do things like boil water and stuff like that pretty easily. You can also use Coke cans to make something like a small lantern. Since the inside of a soda can is reflective, that's going to push a lot of that light and a lot of that heat back towards you. And then, of course, I mean, if you're uh, somebody who studies weather and you have these little sensors that you want to go inside of a tornado, you can just cut up a bunch of soda cans, turn them into little propellers, and the tornado will suck them right up in there for you. Yay, Twister. Another everyday item that has survival uses is pool noodles. A while back, I did a video showing how you could use one to help you run an extension cord into your home, like if you're needing to use a generator. A minute ago, I mentioned that you can use a pool noodle on top of like a five gallon bucket to give you something to sit on if you're needing to use the bucket as a commode. And then also, I mean, if you're needing to make different kinds of racks to store things, then a pool noodle could be used for that if you have uh, things like tripod deer stands or even box stands, you can use maybe half of a pool noodle to um, use as a rifle rest to reduce the amount of sound that, um, that your rifle makes as you're laying it down or also to, to give it a little bit more stabilization. Another everyday item that has a lot of different survival uses is dental floss. Dental floss has a lot of different hunting applications. For instance, you can use it as a snare if you set it up right, although that's not going to be the, be the easiest thing to do. Wire's better, but it could work. Also could be used as fishing line, uh, could be used as a trip wire. Say you're camping and you want to be alerted if somebody or something comes into your campsite. You can hook some dental floss up to some tin cans, maybe some glass bottles if you can find them out there so that when they hit that trip wire, it makes a whole lot of noise. If you're in a situation where maybe you have a large cut or something like that, you can use these as sutures. And also, there are some types of dental floss that are flammable, so you can kind of use them as an emergency fire starter. Not all of them are, so if you are wanting to keep some maybe for that purpose, go ahead and test it out first. Cut you off a little piece, make sure it'll actually light because I tried it with several um, a while back and it didn't work nearly as well as I thought it would. Dental floss can also be used as backup shoe or boot laces and also work well to help repair things like clothing and bags. Another everyday item with a lot of different survival uses is petroleum jelly. You've probably seen the old cotton ball or dryer lint soaked in Vaseline trick where you can use it as an emergency fire starter. They light easy, they burn for a while. It'll make building a fire, even in pretty bad conditions, much, much easier. And then kind of related to that, you can also use it kind of as its own candle. You can take a bit of a cotton ball, soak it in the Vaseline, kind of flatten it out, turn it into a wick, put it in a glob of Vaseline, and you have yourself a candle. Now, you want to be sure to not use it in its original tub because it's just plastic. I mean, you could put it in maybe like a small like shot glass or something like that, but they do work well as candles. But they also have some medicinal uses as well. You can use uh, petroleum jelly for if you have like cracked knuckles or something like that. It can help moisturize that and help you feel a lot better. It can also help out your cuticles if 
those are giving you issues, and I know that's not a life or death thing, the whole cuticle deal, but I mean, could make your life a lot easier. And another good thing about it is it provides a barrier between like small cuts and abrasions between that cut and like outside contaminants and stuff like that. It's also gonna be a decent lubricant. So if you're in a big bind and you don't have gun oil or something like that, you could probably use this. I wouldn't glop it on like crazy and I wouldn't do it just to see if you could, but in a pinch, it's probably better than running it dry, I would imagine. And then also, if you have something like a high carbon steel knife, you're gonna be able to use this to help protect that metal, do other things like lubricate zippers. If you have a door in your house that sounds like the entrance to the Crypt Keeper's crib, you can put some of that on the, uh, on the hinge pin and that'll quiet it down quite a bit, which is a big deal if you have a little one because you wouldn't think it would be, but it can seem like a life or death situation if the creaky door hinge wakes up a baby after you spend a while trying to get him to sleep. Parents, if you know what I'm talking about, drop that down in the comments below. The next everyday item that has a lot of survival uses is chapstick. And this is pretty similar to petroleum jelly. I think it's almost the same thing, just in different packaging and a little bit different consistency. But it's gonna have a lot of the same medicinal benefits. Of course, it's used to prevent and treat chapped lips but it can work on other parts of your body also, like your hands. And it's also a good lubricant, much like petroleum jelly, especially if you're somebody who has like a bow or a crossbow. I mean, this is almost, I mean, it's the same type of applicator that you would use to lubricate the rails on a crossbow or the string. Now, the lubricant's probably different, but it, it will work in a pinch. And another good thing about chapstick is the little tube if once you get done with the uh, the stuff inside of it, you can use the tube itself kind of as a mini survival kit. You can keep things like matches and stuff like that inside of there. Even if you're not wanting it as a standalone kit, it could be a good organizational aid. Another thing that you can use chapstick for is to help you prevent your glasses from fogging up. All you would do is just apply a little bit onto there buff it out with a soft cloth that isn't your shirt because chapstick can probably stain that if you're not careful. Buff it out until it's invisible and it'll make it much, much harder for those lenses to fog up. The next everyday item that has a lot of survival uses is safety pins. Probably the most common way that you would use this is to do uh, gear repair out in the field, to repair things like sleeping bags, backpacks, clothing, things like that but you can also use it if you wrapped a bandage around your arm and you want to keep it from unraveling you can use safety pins for that i prefer the bigger ones kind of the bigger the better because they hold up and they're tougher but you can also use safety pins as a fish hook if you need to you could very easily use a multi-tool to make that out in the field and also, since they're kind of sharp and pokey, they're going to do a good job removing things like splinters. If you have like a squirt bottle or something that's kind of gotten clogged, you can use the pokey end to clear out the nozzle. And then also, if you have a water bottle and you need to convert it into a spray bottle where you can squeeze and squirt, then just take the pokey end of a safety pin poke through that end, and then you should have at least some type of stream that you can use to do things like irrigate wounds or clean off toothbrushes so you don't use a whole lot of water doing that task. And related to another item that I mentioned earlier, safety pins also make a good shim if you need to undo a zip tie so that you can use it for later. Coffee filters are another item that has a lot of different survival uses. I know a lot of people used them during the opening days of COVID as sort of a makeshift face mask when you couldn't find those at all. Um, then also, one really good way to use this is a pre-filter to clean larger contaminants and larger debris out of water before you run it through something like a Berkey or a Sawyer, because if you're in a long-term survival situation, you're gonna want to take care of your water filters as much as possible so they don't get gummed up to the point where you can't really use them the way that you want to. Another good thing about coffee filters is they are flammable. You can use them kind of as tender if you need to. 
They also work well as kind of just little makeshift baggies if you have like maybe you went foraging and you found some like pecans or maybe some blackberries or something like that. You can use these to help hold those. And if you are moving a lot and you notice that there's two pieces of gear in your pack that are making a whole lot of noise, you can put some coffee filters around them or in between them to help reduce that noise so that if you're trying to be sneaky, you're not making a whole bunch of noise wandering around. Another everyday item that has a lot of different survival uses is paper clips. And probably the one that most people are familiar with is using paper clips as lock picks. To make that work, you actually need two paper clips. You need one which is going to be your rake, which moves the pins out of the way. Then you're also going to need another one that'll keep tension on the lock so that once you move the pins out of the way, they stay out of the way while you're taking care of the other pins and you use that to turn the lock all the way so you can get inside. They can also be used as flathead screwdrivers. So if you have a flathead screw that's not too terribly tight, then you can use just the end of a paper clip to turn that. You can also straighten out one end of your paper clip, kind of smash the end of it, and you should be able to do things like tighten the screws on your glasses with that. Another everyday item that has a lot of survival uses is garbage bags. When you're talking about garbage bags, the thicker they are and the heavier duty they are, the better. So you're looking for things like contractor bags, but they can be used as things like ponchos to help keep you dry. They can also be used as pack liners. Like if you have your bug out bag, you can use that as a liner to keep everything in so it's much less likely to get wet. And I mean, you can also use it to, um, like if you have to cross a river or something, you can put the entire bag in it along with your clothing, go across, and then when you get to the other side, you have dry clothing. And then also, if you're in a situation where you need some water, you can use it to collect rainwater. And then also, um, you can use trash bags, as I believe it's called transpir or transpiration bags, where you tie them real tight around like a real leafy tree limb. And then throughout the day, the, the heat of the sun will cause the water that's inside of those leaves to exit and then gather inside of that bag. So you can gather a little bit of water that way. And no list like this would be complete without mentioning duct tape. Duct tape is another one of those prepping all-stars that just has probably a billion different uses. Of course, the most obvious is using it to repair gear and stuff like that, but you can also use it as bandages. The green, uh, gray bearded green beret did a video where he showed he would take a strip of duct tape, put a piece of paracord on one side, roll it up, do that twice, put one on each side of like a cut, and then you could use it as a large butterfly bandage to seal up maybe a larger cut. I'll, I'll try to link down in the description below because that, that's a pretty cool video. I, I really liked it. And of course, they can also be used as smaller butterfly sutures as well. Maybe you have a small cut, you can just use that to help you, um, you know, close it up um, so that, you know, less stuff gets into it. But it's not doing something like gluing it shut where you're risking infection and stuff like that. Because if you miss even just a little bit of crud, um, and you've glued it shut, then you're probably going to have an infection. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Y'all have a good one. Thanks again.